Well, I'm delighted to say that uh, joining me on the Godcast today is Tommy Cannon, who doesn't really need much much of an introduction, but he's obviously one half of the the fantastic double act uh, Cannon and Ball. Tommy, it's an absolute joy to get you on the Godcast. How are you? Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. It's nice to be here. Nice to be on the show. Where, whereabouts are you, Tommy? Where's home for you? In, uh, I'm in um, halfway between York City Centre and Selby Town Centre on the A19. It's a little village called Wickle. R-I-C-C-A-L-L. So are you, are you not too far away from Billy Pierce? Because Billy Pierce came on the Godcast. He's over your way, is he? Yeah, Billy's what? I could get to Billy's house in what? Half an hour, forty minutes. Yeah. What what yeah. took you what took you to your Tommy? Have you lived there a while? Oh, I've lived over here now over thirty years. Um uh, unfortunately or fortunately or whatever, um during the uh, sort of big success that Bobby and I were having, uh, things went wrong with my mar- marriage, my first marriage, um which uh, all ended up in divorce. Um and I don't know why I came to Yorkshire, but it was um um we I bought a house with um with about um fourteen acres of land and I thought to myself, if anything goes wrong with your business, I can do a bit of farming, do a bit of whatever, you know, like that sort of thing. Um and uh, yeah, I've lived over here now thirty years or so. It's not I mean it's not too far from uh, where I was born and bred in Oldham. No, no. No. And, and Tommy, I mean, somebody described themselves as being at the other, down the other end of a corridor to me on a Godcast, and you've had a, an yeah. amazing career, Tommy. How, how do you look back at it? You know, how do you sum it up? Is, was it just been a complete joy, or, or has there been times of difficulty? Or... Yeah, because there's been times when... Um, Bobby and I fell out, if you like. I mean, we were nearly 60. Well, we were, we knew one another for 60 years, but we were 58 years in show business. And when you, when you're a double act, you like a marriage. Of course, you have a little fallout or whatever. I think one of the biggest mistakes wasn't mine and Bob's fault was having what you call, um, an entourage, but what we didn't have, we didn't have one entourage taken as everywhere. We had two. So one took Bob, one took me. In them days, we didn't even have to register in a hotel. The lads used to come in, right, go on up to your room, we'll bring the bags up, we'll do this, we'll, I mean, massive mistake. Um, and we found out by accident that uh, one of the lads was leaving and he said, um, listen, he said, I'd, I'm speaking out of school now, but you need to be careful because when you go to your rooms, both entourages meet up and start making up stories. You won't believe what Tom's saying about you, Bob. You won't believe, Bob, what Tom's saying about you and all this. Um, and for, I don't know, maybe six weeks or so, it was very, very hard work for Bob and I. And eventually we sat down in the dressing room and said, Bob, this can't go on, mate. And he said, no, you're right. He said, it can't. I said, I think the best thing to do is to get rid of the entourages and do our own thing, travel together, et cetera, et cetera. And that's what we did. And from that day on, things became so much easier, I can't tell you. Mm. And um, I suppose I suppose management at that time, you know, we were... We couldn't go anywhere without being noticed and people wanting autographs, bless them. And then it just it wore us down. So we decided to move forward and that's what we did. And things things were so much better after that. Yeah. Tommy, it's well documented how you met and how you worked together. But I've not really heard how, how you got the name, how you came up with Cannon and Ball. Was, was that kind of just a stroke of genius or just tell us about that? <laughs> It wasn't a stroke of genius. Um, we had, we were called um, in our early days. We were called Shirelle Brothers, uh, Bobby and Stevie Rhythm, <laughs> Harper Brothers, and then when we um, started to sort of get little bits of TV stuff, um, 
I used to love a, an American uh, rock and roll singer called um, Freddie Cannon. I think he was called Freddie. But he was a massive rock and roll singer. And I love the, the Cannon. Cannon's a strong front name, if you like. Mm. And Bob said, well, what am I going to be called? And I said, um, we went through everything. Uh, Cannon and Pepper, Cannon and Salt. We, we went through the works. And all of a sudden, I just said to him, I know what we can do. Bob, you can be called Ball. Cannon and Ball. He went crackers. I'm not being called Ball. Blimey, you can forget that. I said, there's a famous footballer called Alan Ball. I said, you, you know, I said, you're in with royalty. Anyway, when we went to do Opportunity Knocks, um, for the, we auditioned and then we had to wait nearly two years before we got on the show. So when, when we went on audition, we, we auditioned as singers. It took that long for us to get on the show that we down changed to Canada Ball and we were doing comedy. So when we went up on, um, on stage and started, Huey Green came on the, on the, on the floor, on the studio floor. He said, excuse me, boys. He said, but what are you doing? I said, we're doing our act, Mr. Green. He said, you auditioned as singers. I said, I know, Mr. Green. I said, but that was two years ago. I said, we changed. We changed our act. And he said to us, um, be it on your own heads. He walked away and we came last. <laughs> I was, yeah. I was Toby, I was about to ask how tight the act was, but you've perhaps, uh, you've perhaps summed it yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it was an experience. And I'll I, I tell you a funny story. Les Dawson, bless him, ah. uh, at the time, uh, when we walked in to do our audition as singers, he was sat on stage doing it on the piano, playing all out of tune. And I said to Bob, I said, he's got no chance of getting through me. And Bob said, you're right, he can't even play the piano. <laughs> but we didn't know at that time that it was the famous Les Dawson. Tommy, that was one of my questions, because as well as you two guys being my comedy heroes, Les was my other comedy hero. Did, did you yeah, work so. did you work did you work with him much? Uh no, um we didn't work at all. I don't ever remember us working with Les, but uh, he was a keen golfer and so was I. And we used to play in a golf tournament every year, which was the Howard Keel Golf Classic. And um I I can see him now. Um he came to play in the last one that he played in Blessing and he um, he sat at the table and he said, I'm, uh, I'm not playing in this tournament, Tom, he said, but he said, uh, I'll be having a wander around the golf course and everything. And um, not long after that, Blessing, he passed away. Um, very sad. Mm. Um, lovely man. Um, just... I suppose like every, you know that somewhere along the line you're going to pass away, I suppose, but you don't expect it when somebody's sat with you, chatting away like there's nothing wrong, you know what I mean? No. It just, it just, um, just comes as a shock. And I suppose that must have been how it felt with, with Bob, was it? Oh, uh, Bob was, um, I think of him every day, uh, bless him, but he, he um, it was a it was a strange thing because we were working at the Viva Club in Blackpool, and he came in, and his two sons were working with us as well, mm -hmm. the Harper brothers, and um, he came into the dressing room with a mask on. First time ever I'd ever seen him with a mask on. The con the, the pandemic had been going what a good few months, and so, and I said, "What's up with you?" He said. No, he said, I'm all right. He said, I'm, you know, he said, I've not, I've just been, um, I've not been feeling too special. I said, all oh, right, right, right. And um, it was a strange, strange evening. Um, and then on the Saturday, he rang me and said, Tom, you know that test I went for? And I said, test? What do you mean, test? What do you mean? He said, I went for a, I said, Bob, you didn't tell me about a test, mate. He said, well, he said, don't matter, does it? He said, well, I'm positive with COVID. So I said, oh, my God, Bobby. 
he said, yeah, he said, but um, he said, I'll be all right. And the, and the funny thing about it is, bless him, is that he walked down the stairs to the car, because at the river it's an underground car park, mm. and he was walking down the stairs to the car, and oh, he was panting and puffing, and I, had, I took all the stuff off him that he was carrying and carried it down, and I waited in the car park to make sure that when he got in his car that he drove off, which he did. And then, I think, if I'm not mistaken, on the Sunday, he went into hospital. And I, I, I just couldn't believe it. And his two lads, one of his lads rang me and said, Tom, Dad's in hospital. And I said, oh, what's up? He said, I don't know. He said, he's got in anyway. <laughs> Typical Bobby, bless him. He ran. He rang, he FaceTimed me on Monday morning, sat in a bed with six nurses round the bed and said, Tony, all the nurses want to wave to you, so I put me on FaceTime. And there they were all, all waving to me. And I said to him, I thought you were poorly. He said, oh, I'm all right, I'm all right. I said, good. <clears throat> Excuse me. I said, so get better soon, mate. The biggest problem for me was I couldn't see him. I couldn't visit him mm. because of COVID rules and regulations and stuff. And um, Ten days later, he passed away. Um, yeah. It was so quick. Um, I didn't know where I were. I felt like I'd had my right arm taken off me. And, um, I haven't worked, not because Bob's passed away, but certainly because of COVID. I haven't done any work for the past two years. Um, and so I'm hoping to go out and take a show out which I'm going to be interviewed by a guy um, and tell tell the world, if you like, about our story together, 60 years in the business, yeah. uh, our ups, our downs, um, the daft things that Bob did and daft things I did. And um, I'm going to go on there and then I'm going to ask the audience do they want to ask me any questions. Wonderful. Well, I'll be coming to that if that, if that, if that yeah. comes around here. I will do. But, but Tommy... Um... What struck me when when Bob died was how quickly the the media the media was just huge, wasn't it? And did did you feel uh, it must have been quite difficult for you then, I guess, because you've got you've got the loss of Bobby, but then you've got the media who who they just want the the soundbite or the words of Tommy Cannon, don't they? How was that for you? It was um, well, I did a I did a little bit on TV. Uh, as a thing to Bob, and um, I found that very difficult. The some guy wrote it, and when I sat there reading it, I I said, "I'm sorry." I said, "But Bob wouldn't speak to me like you wrote it." I said, "It's not right." I said, "You need to forget that and just let me talk." I said, "Because it's very difficult to read something that I'm not comfortable with." Um, and um, it was uh, it was Hazel, my wife. She was with me, and she said, "You need to let Tom do what he wants to do." He said because it's it's really difficult to try to read something. Mm. But for me, sounded like it was a script, if you like, which I didn't want it. To, I wouldn't want that. So I stopped all that, and we and I just did it my own way. Um, and that was. Um, that was very emotional, um, uh, and I kept. I always say it, and I say it now. Even now, I can feel him. Mm. I can feel him stood at the side of me here, saying, "Go on, Tommy, lad. Go on. You can do it." Um, <laughs> it's one of them things, yeah. uh, and I've got I've got some ashes above me, and I've got it outside in the hallway. And every morning I get up, I touch the box with the ashes in, and say, "All right, well." Because he's up there now with mm. a lot of famous people, um, and um, I think he'd be having a great time, bless him. There'll be a lot of laughter, Tommy, won't there? I will too. I will too. Yeah. yeah, and and Tommy, I, I know I know that uh, Cannon and Bull, you know, you had the the mainstream kind of act, but you also uh, had the 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 stuff that you took around the churches. How how important has your faith been during? Losing oh, Bobby, is it has been a help for you? Yeah, it's, it's been great. Um, I don't know what I'd have done without it. Um, I have a 
pal by the name, well, it used to be mine, I'm Bobby's pal, Chris Gidney, who's a great advocate for the church. Um, he books um, small cruises, if you like. And um, in, I think it's April, I'm going on a cruise and I'm going to, and he's going to interview me about Bob and about how much we were involved with the, the Lord and everything like that. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Uh, but you, you uh, Tommy, am I right saying you came to faith late? I was right, you said you were born again Christians. That suggests yeah. That you, yeah. So, how did that happen for you? Um, well, Bob became, it's such a while back now, Bob became a born again Christian before me. And um, I went to, you can, I can't believe I was uh, baptized, I think, when I was, <laughs> when I was in my 40s, I think it was something like that. And I was baptized in York, right. um, uh, which was um, which was quite an experience actually. Um, I stood in this sort of miniature pool, if you like, in the water, and two of the chaps were in there, and they, they did a little prayer and they baptized me. And um, I absolutely got <laughs> absolutely soaked wet through. <laughs> it was what a, it was a really weird. Um, Thing. But uh, yeah, very, very emotional, very enjoyable. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think we used to do, we used to do some great shows in churches uh, up and down the country. Bob started doing them before me, actually, because he was, he was the born again Christian before me. And Bob did them. And then he said, why don't you come along? He said, have a look at one of them if you want to we'll, we'll do some together. And that was as simple as it was. And we started doing them, yeah. Was he an influence on you becoming a Christian, would you say, Tommy, or did you just discover it for yourself? Uh, I suppose in a way um, he was. I, I, didn't, I didn't see Bob became a born-again Christian, but he was still Bob, if you know what I mean. He, yeah. didn't, he didn't lose any of his razzmatazz and his whatever. Um, and I didn't think anything of it. Uh, to be honest, I thought, okay, well, you know, if that's his bag, you know, fair enough. Um, and then I think we were sat in a dressing room somewhere and um, he said, have you ever thought about, you know, becoming a Christian and stuff like that? And, and I've met Chris Gidney, who, he's an absolute lovely man, Chris. Um, and um, at first I was very apprehensive. I, I don't know, I, I thought, well, I don't know whether you know, what are people going to think of me and all that business. And then all of a sudden I said, yeah, I said, um, I said, yeah, I said, maybe so. And then I went to this church in uh, in York and, uh, and I don't know whether the, uh, I don't know whether the vicar is still the same lad now, what I did, but he was only a young, a young uh, vicar, a lovely lad. And uh, I got baptised there and I became born again Christian. Amazing, isn't it, Tommy? How life turns out. I know, I know. <laughs> it is. And I, I just think, I think in all honesty, where everybody is on from the day they're born, everybody's on a path, whether they like it or not, and you veer off the path, but you always come back to that path that leads you down the life, the the, the road that you're going to lead. Because, you know, Bob and I have come off the path and slipped off and done this and done that, but we've always got back mm. onto that path that we were born to be on. Yeah. Because like, I never thought, I, mean, I never thought in a million years that I would be in show business. I mean, you know, all I wanted to do as a kid was play cricket for England or football. I never could play rugby. Well, I did, and then I got my shoulder dislocated by a bloke who was, like about six stone heavier than me, so I thought, oh, this game's not for me, I'm getting flattened. Mm. Uh, so to be, to come into show business is like, wow. And I still look back now and think, how the heck did that happen? <laughs> I mean, because Bob had been in it, he was when he was seven and eight year old with his sister, you know, had a, he used to do um, radio, Workers' radio time, or something we're called in the yeah. in the cotton mill days, and he used to go up on stage and with his mate, with Mavis, his, his sister. So he always knew about it, 
but me, you know, you can't blame me. I didn't even think I could sing. Never mind, go on stage. It was amazing. Yeah, and you talk about following a path, Tommy. I mean, this the success of Cannon and Ball was is unprecedented. I mean, I suppose the only yeah. people, you know, you were the the Anton Deck of the time, really, weren't you? You were. Uh, yeah. I think it was twelve years or something. You were prime time Saturday night. Yeah, yeah, we were. Yeah, we were thirteen years prime time, and on a Saturday evening, we got close to twenty million viewers oh. every Saturday. Incredible, and that was colossal. Yeah, Tom, I wanted to ask you, Tommy, about what you you and Bobby preferred because you had the TV stuff, but mm. you know, I'm I'm from a generation that just loved the summer season. I mean, it didn't really oh. matter who was on, you know, and. And I've yeah. seen you in Blackpool and and and, and yeah. on numerous occasions. Did you enjoy the live stuff more than the recording stuff? What was it for you guys? Yeah, the, the TV was great for getting us out there to the public, but you couldn't be working live. Um, it was um, a very special um, place for me and Bob, um, even even in working men's club. And, and well, we started off in pubs. Um, working and it was it was strange because I were on drums. That's all I did. I, I just played drums. And uh, one night Bob was singing. And um, don't get me wrong, whether it was a song or whatever it was, I had no idea. And I'm playing on. All of a sudden, I joined in singing. And he stopped Bob. He said, "What the heck are you doing?" I said, "Oh, I, I said I don't know. I said I just, I just like the song." He said, "I didn't know you could sing." Come on, get off the drums, you're up the front with me now singing. That's how the singing act were born. Yeah. Once again, by accident. Yeah. And just say something about those summer seasons, Tommy. I mean, you were doing, well, at Blackpool, it'd be May to November, would it? And twice now. Well, was we it? Did, yeah, we did um, uh, Winter Gardens uh, in Blackpool, which is the, one of the biggest theatres in the country. It's almost 3,200 people. And we played it for 25 weeks one summer, and there were two shows a night, so that was 6,400 people. And we played 25 weeks to that audience every single night, and also did a Sunday concert <laughs> in between it all. So, yeah, um, it was just it was just phenomenal. Um, yeah. you know, I don't think. I don't think you can take the success in enough because you, in them days, you were just on a, well, like being on a roller coaster. You'd do summer season, you'd do um, a pantomime. I mean, we did 35 years of pantomimes, which we absolutely loved because what we got was we got a whole range of an audience because you got grandma, granddad, mum and dad, and the grandkids. Mm -hmm. So that audience were growing up with you all the time. So Panto was very, very important to us. And we loved it. Absolutely yeah. loved it. Yeah. And you had, um, I think I saw you in Blackpool. I think I think Wayne Dobson, the magician, is, is not very well these days. No, he's not, no. And uh, Brad, a young Bradley Walsh, a lot of people uh, do it. Know, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we didn't know about um, Wayne, Wayne Dobson being uh, not well uh, until um, one, when we were going on for finale to take the barrels, all the cast, he was in the wings and I think Bob were behind him and he suddenly, it was like he couldn't move forward and, and Bob sort of slapped him on his backside. Come on, Wayne. And that was big. That was what the beginning of his illness. Uh, so we now know about it, of course, but we yeah. didn't know at the time. No, no. And Bradley was a good stand-up, weren't he? He doesn't do it so much these days. Yeah, yeah, he was good. Yeah, he. Um, Bradley now has found his niche. I mean, he's so good now. He's a singer. He does a show with his son, which is great, and does um. What they call well, that quiz show is called. He does that as well at five o'clock through the week, every every night. I mean, he's found his niche now. I'm pleased for him. Yeah, yeah. And and Tommy, I was watching. Um, I was watching you and Bobby um, a recording on YouTube from 2005, 
where you, you your live show there. Mm-hmm. And um, comedy is the thing that excites me, and I love watching it for the craft that it is and the art that it is. Yeah. And and you guys were tight as, weren't you? You were bang yeah. on it. Yeah. I mean, it was it's just absolute. It's a masterclass. I when I watched it, I just thought everything. You know, even even when you went off script a little bit, you know, you. Yeah, know. you <laughs> What, yeah, was that just practice, or was that was it? You because your relationship was so good. Our relationship was good, but it was it was. I suppose you can't really define um, what it was. But even even I sit and put YouTube on, and when I watch the Lulu sketch, which was the wall, um, it's incredible how. It all works, and the fun that we get out of it. And sometimes, yes, we used to go off the script just to make the person who were working with us make him feel a bit uncomfortable, which was not nice in a way. <coughs> but I'll tell you a true story, uh, and this is not what anybody should do, but when you have good actors on in panto with you, the one thing you must never do is mess about with the lines. Because as good as they are, it throws them into a wobble. <laughs> so Bob and I go on, and before we go on, Bob said, tell you what we'll do. You do my lines, and I'll do yours. I said, Bob, that'll drive them mad. He said, it'll be all right, be all right. On we go. So well, Bob's opening line, I did it. And if you would have seen the faces of the actors, it was, oh, oh, oh they didn't know what to do. They didn't, know, they didn't know when to come in. It was so funny. I mean, don't get me wrong. We apologised after. We said, we're sorry. Because we, we, in Panto, sometimes it just does get a little bit boring. <laughs> Repetitive lines, you know, it does get a little bit boring. So we just threw that into the mix and... Um, it didn't go down very well. No, no. And I guess he did that with you a bit, did he? Oh, I used to do it all the time, yeah. I used to, um, I, I'll be honest, I used to get as much laughter from him as the audience did when we were on stage. I, it was just that I had to keep this persona up all the time. Um, you know, I used to let him go off on a tangent and then I'd bring him back by grabbing hold of him with scruff of the neck. I said, right, get here, you now and behave yourself. And then I'd get all the his lapels and he'd go, oh, you've got me skin. You know, all them sort of things would just just happen. Yeah. You know, we never wrote anything like that. Yeah. So it just happened. And, and that song, Tom, that's become your own, that uh, Together Will Be Okay. Yeah, Laugh Me A Laugh, yeah. Laugh Me A Laugh. I mean, where did yeah. you get, where did you pick that up from? Was it presented to you? Yeah, when we did the first TV show, before we did the TV show, we started to do them. Uh, David Bell, who was uh, head of light entertainment in them days, who's now passed away, bless him, um, got this Nigel, Nigel Hess is the guy. He wrote the song for us. And uh, when we heard it, we said, oh, that is absolutely fantastic. And of course, it stayed with us every, everywhere we went for, for, for well, for, for 30 years, it certainly um, was on our, the, our opening number. <coughs> Excuse me, coughing. It's a belter, isn't it? it I mean, I, um, I watched the clip with you. Was it Bobby's Lads you were singing with? I mean, that, uh, that at, the, at the gala night. At the gala that, night. That was very moving to see that, Tommy. It must have been moving yeah. doing it. It was. It, it's, it, we had a charity dinner. Um, and Bob's lads were on it. There, there were about four or five different acts on. And um, Darren or Robert, I forget which one it was now, came up to me and said, uh, we're going on doing 10 minutes, Tom. I said, oh, good. He said, we're going to get you up. I said, no, 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 no. Don't, please don't get me up singing. Laugh me a laugh, please. And he said, right, okay, okay. Anyway, they, they did. Five different said, Ladies and gentlemen, we're now going to sing a song that's become a favourite for my dad and Tommy. Tommy, come on. And oh, they got a round of applause. I had to go up and do it with them, didn't I? So, 
Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, I still haven't got rid of this COVID one. Yeah, and 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 um, that uh, that Bobby Ball Foundation that that's that's gonna have a good legacy for Bob, isn't it? Of course it is. Yeah, we've got a statue to unveil in uh, on um, I think it's July thirty first that um, I'm going to do with Bobby's wife Yvonne. We're going to cut the ribbon for that. Um, Where's that going to be, uh, Tommy? Whereabouts in Blackpool is it going to be? In the um, there's a theatre there. Um, oh, God. The Grand? No, not the, no. It's in St Anne's. This. Oh, it's all down in St Anne's. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and there's big gardens at the back of the theatre, and it's been there. There's been a rose bed uh, done, and so that's where the statue's going. Yeah. Lovely, very nice. Because Leslie's up there as well, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and Tom, you must still get recognised everywhere you go. And what's that like? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> the funny thing is, I thought, oh, COVID's doing going to do one thing for me. It's going to stop me being recognised. Never. Doesn't do it. Have this mask on and they, hey, oh, Tommy, all right. <laughs> Doesn't do it. So, yeah. I mean, it's very nice um, to be uh, sort of still recognised and everything. But, um, you know, I'm now, um, I've decided, I mean, COVID put things on the back burner for me because, I was going to go out last year and do a show as a tribute to Bob. That all got cancelled. All the theatres got closed down. Um, so in a way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something with them, with his two lads as well. We're going to do a show together. Um, and I just think that um, I want it to be a tribute, but I also want it to be a celebration of Bob's life. You know, so that um, I'll feel really good about that if we can get that together. And I think we will. I think we will. I'm, I'm sure you will, Tommy. And, you know, on a personal level, I, I've, I've been fortunate to see lots of famous people. I've been fortunate to interview lots of famous people on the Godcast. Yeah. But meeting yeah. you, Tommy, today has been a real privilege for me. I'm, oh, you, you, you were, you know, you were the people that made me cheer up on a Saturday night, you made me laugh and laugh and laugh and and um, your chemistry with Bobby is unrivaled, I think. I think you really are are up there with the very, very best and it's been a real privilege talking to you, Tommy, and thank you. Thanks so much for your time and uh, look forward to hopefully coming to your show sometime. I'm sure you'll be All right, that'd be great. All right, thanks again. God bless, thanks, Tom. Bye-bye.